Hey everyone, welcome back to A Battle to Beat Alzheimer's. I'm here with Dr. Sanjeev in his office, and we are exploring different ways to, de er, to detect early Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Sanjeev is gonna share some of the science behind um, early detection. Yeah, and yeah. so I think up to now, we've never had a really good way to diagnose Alzheimer's. It's actually been a diagnosis, a, a pathologic, di uh, uh, a diagnosis done at post-mortem. So it means that when they looked at the brains of Alzheimer's patients, they were able to say, okay, this person died of Alzheimer's because we see these amyloid deposits and neurofibrillatory uh, tangles. So, okay, uh, but what is an amyloid? It's a... It's a type of protein. Okay. And what they used to see was this buildup of this protein um, deposits amyloid. In the brain. In the brain. So they said, oh, this is Alzheimer's disease. But there was never really a way before that to kind of know, hey, is the amyloid building up in the brain? Um, and because we didn't, were unable to do that, it was really a diagnosis of just kind of looking at someone doing that test. You know, mm -hmm. we, did, we did the MOCA test the other day right. and seeing, hey, or this person's having some already cognitive problems, so it must be Alzheimer's because there's no right. other cause that we can figure out. So again, post-mortem means you have you can't get into that brain. There's no, yeah. there's, are there scans that you can Yeah, do? so I think there's research b being done looking at use getting a spec scan. Okay. So looking, so spec scan, look at how the brain is functioning. Uh, again, very expensive, not going to be available for everyone. Right. So the, really the holy grail would be, could we get a blood test? Just like you go to your doctor and have like a cholesterol test or you do an A1C to check your diabetes. If we could get a blood test that could predict like even 10 years before symptoms came that you're already building up amyloid or you're at risk of getting diabetes, um, getting Alzheimer's mm -hmm. later on, that would be huge. Yeah. And so that's why I think this research that's come out just in the last year about this protein uh, marker, biomarker called PTAU217. Okay. So I just want to write this down just so sure. people can, can see that. So it's PTAU217. So this marker uh, is a blood marker. Okay. And it looks like it... Um, uh, it can basically, it's related to uh, the amyloid deposits that are in, in the brain. Okay, you have a little a chart here. So what, what is that chart sharing with you? Yeah, with so, us? so this, this chart is showing that here, here's the PTAU217 here, so right. this kind of pink line here. And what it's showing is that uh, obviously all of these markers are increasing as the amyloid is beta is positive, um, then this um, this P tau is increasing, and so are the other ones. But what's interesting here is that it remains high here, even though the amyloid is negative. So what they're trying to show here is that it's actually better. It's an it, it predicts early disease. It can show right. that even if you have no symptoms, if you're showing up positive here uh, with this P tau two one seven you can find out even before you even get symptoms that you're getting, you have, you're on track to potentially Right, get because this right. graph is showing you the increase, but it's over time. So that's probably over, I don't know, 10 years, mm -hmm. a, a few years, right? Uh, 20 years, like probably oh, 20 years. a long okay. time that happens. And so that's a pretty amazing thing because if you could know before you actually get symptoms, that means no damage has happened to your neurons. Okay. And so the interesting thing is about these medications, and I think we did talk about it on the previous episode, mm -hmm. the new medications come out to remove amyloid from the, oh, that's from right. the blood. And, but it only works in people who are very mild, mild Alzheimer's, or what we call mild cognitive impairment, MCI. Mild cognitive impairment means... So that's why it's important for early detection. Exactly. Because once you're in act, there's a, is there a tipping point to you can't really correct this now because I think you didn't it's, detect it early. Exactly. I think okay. if you already have moderate Alzheimer's, okay. it, it doesn't matter anymore about removing the amyloid because the cells have already been damaged and are di dead. Okay. So I think that we have to catch it way earlier before the damage has already caused havoc. Right. Um, and so and that's so why, yeah. This is this is found in the blood. Exactly. And that's okay. what's even better because... Some of these markers were being done in the, in the CSF. And here it says CSF, but but what's nice about two one seven uh, tau is that uh, the blood m version is as good as the CSF version. How, so, how, does, one, CSF, how does one detect the CSF? CSF is, is very difficult. You have to get a lumbar puncture. Ooh, so what again, is that? most people, you know, so we like put in the a, brain, in, uh, in your spine here. Oh, you'd okay. have to put a needle in your spine. And again, most people do not want to do that. It's you know, and it's, it's costly. painful. It's, you know, it's right. not. 
risks and all that. So again, we need a blood test. And okay. so that's what's exciting about this this blood marker. And and uh, and so exactly this is what's happening here in this little in this um, brain. Um, yeah, brain where they're showing that amyloid is caused by beta amyloid aggregation. And you can see this uh, tau is also increasing. Um, and what's happening is the tau is getting basically changed into, is changing, um, in amyloid brains is changing in such that it's kind of getting tangled up and forming like balls. And is that, those balls impair, those are all the side effects, like the, the memory loss, the, the, the slurred speech. Yeah, so what happens, else. imagine like a cell, it's trying to, like a neuron is trying to do its work. But if all this protein's building up, garbage is building up within the Rounded, cell, yeah. it can't function. Right. So eventually it dies. Got it. And so that's that's why, like uh, I may have mentioned before, is that Alzheimer's is a disease of basically the inability to get rid of these, what I was saying, toxins, but not really sure. toxins, but these abnormal Protein. proteins right. that are just building up and building up. So Right, because you talked about detecting the ApoE4. Yes, ApoE4. ApoE4 is the allele, mm -hmm. and that's you. That is uh, something that you know from birth. Like you could test. You're not going to test a child, but you could, right? To, to yes. know if they had it. Yes, yes. It's it's still it's it's a genetic thing you're born with. That your your this gene that you have inherited from your parents, and I, this is the at risk allele, and, right? And these people have more problem clearing out the amyloid. And tau from their cells. So if I if I knew and I took the test early on, whether I'm even in my 30s, my mm -hmm. 40s, then I would be more motivated to take exactly. this blood test. Yes. Not if I like, I, and I could do it anyway, right? Because because yeah. um, it's good to know. It's yeah, good to good know to if know. you have it. Just like you said, I, I I have unfortunately one of these alleles, and Chris Hemsworth, as we were mentioning the other show, he has two of these four alleles, puts him at much higher risk. So it's good to know whether you have this risk factor and but again it's not the whole apoe4 apoe is not the whole story right there's uh, a lot of there's a hundred different genes okay. and that's why this other test which right. looked at like a whole collection of genes was even more accurate than just apoe4 so it's and very quickly if mm -hmm. when this blood test becomes available mm -hmm. and it shows um the uh tau 217 mm -hmm. i does everyone have it a tau two one seven or someone who's never going to have Alzheimer's that won't show up. It'll it, there, uh, it won't exist. That's an interesting question. Uh, I suspect everyone has some amount, but but it's that but level. It's, it's the level of okay, the, that they detect. Um, awesome. And so, what's just one prevention tip? What's one thing that someone can do once they discover? Okay, I've got the ApoE four because you're trying to battle it too. Is it? Is it? Uh, can you do no, a diet think, tip? I, uh, yeah, I think I think uh, we need to. Uh, uh, probably exercise is extremely important because the okay. more blood flow you can bring to your brain, mm -hmm. even when you're exercising your muscles, you're also exercising blood's going to your brain as well, and that helps again in removing this these abnormal proteins. Sure. So that's why, like, yeah, um, you know, just cardiovascular exercise, anything that can bring blood flow to your brain will improve. Any exercise overall is, is is a good. Yeah, choice. even brain <laughs> brain exercise is yeah. another important thing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, right. Uh, how do we learn more about this? Uh, the tau two well, I'll put, seven. Well, I'll put the links in there okay. on some research articles. But again, this is not available yet. But we'll be keeping up to date uh, on what's happening with this. It's pretty exciting. Awesome. And so, if you enjoyed the episodes, um, please share and subscribe. Yes. Uh, leave your comments because we're here to really go through the science and uh, the strategies to prevent Alzheimer's in the future.